Direct access is a pretty complicated animal and requires quite a lot of infrastructure setting up, not just on the direct access box itself, but on other servers in your network, not least of which the domain controller, DNS server and certificate server. In my demonstration environment, I've got all of these lumped into one environment. So if you look at my roles here, you can see I've got AD certificate services, domain services, DNS, and I've actually also got a web server running. In Active Directory, we need to create a special global group, which we can give any name we like to, to which all the computers that are going to use direct access are going to belong to. We need to do work with certificates and certificate rev revocation lists and publish those so that these client computers can be properly authenticated as they come in. We need to play with DNS, both for forward lookup zones and reverse lookup zones. And you can see a couple of things in here as I scan down. One of which is ISOTAT, the intrasite automatic tunnel addressing protocol. This is a way of getting IPv6 traffic over an IPv4 infrastructure uh, without needing to use the IPv4 network infrastructure to support multicast. So it's a bit different from IPv6 to 4. We also have to configure DNS to sort out the certificate revocation lists and we have to publish those using IIS so if we go into IIS here, we can see a special CLR disk site that I've created. And you can test that that's all working properly by going into your certificate services, hitting your revoke certificates, and publishing a certificate. And then it will appear in your intranet site. As I say, there's obviously a, a long set of detailed instructions to get all of this working. The main focus of my demo, however, is to look at what we need to do to the direct access server itself. So I'm going to flip over to another virtual machine here, and we're going to have a look at that now. The first thing to mention about the direct access server is that it needs two network adapters. And if we look at the network connections on here, we can see we have internet and LAN. We'll come back and see how those play later on. So the roles we have on our direct access server is only IIS, just the basic installation. And this is just to um, enable the client computers to work out where they are, whether they're inside the corporate infrastructure or not, by pinging this website. If we go down to features, we've got two features, uh, group policy, and of course, what we want to have a look at, direct access. Let's go and have a look and see how this is set up. First thing to notice is we have a nice friendly, it looks very friendly in higher resolutions, but 800 by 600, we can at least see that we have several steps to go through, starting off with those remote clients. Clearly we need to identify who's coming in and who's allowed to come into our network. And I've got that global group I mentioned earlier here identified already. Then we need to configure the direct access server. And if we look at that, we can see the two networks I showed you earlier up here. And if we look at the details of those, we can see that DNS suffix internet connection for one and Woodgrove Bank for the other and the various IP addresses. So we know exactly what we're doing. If we hit next, we now need to pick up these certificates. I've already got them selected here, but if I choose them, You'll see it'll go back to the domain and pick up the certificate that we want. And similarly here. We can set up our smart card policy. At Microsoft we do use smart cards, but you may not. And in this case I'm just going to finish now. So good to go there. We now need to configure our infrastructure server setup. The network location server is run on the direct access server and all we need to do here is browse and pick up that certificate. We can hit next here to move on and identify the DNS and domain controller. And you can see we've already picked that up, which is great. We're not going to bother to uh, remotely manage direct access 
So we're going to leave that clear for now. We're now ready to identify our application servers, the final step in the process. We're not going to require any additional end-to-end -end authentication, we're just going to leave that blank. I've now finished all the steps I need to, I can just hit finish here, and we're done. We now get a nice report confirming what we've set up. We can apply that now. And after a few seconds, we're all set. Now we've installed Direct Access, we get a monitoring tab under the Features in Server Manager. We can see that Direct Access is healthy, and we can see details of any traffic that's going on. And because we've just set it up, there's nothing to see really here at the moment. So I thought it'd be rather interesting to show how Direct Access works in real life, rather than continue with this demo. I've now logged into my laptop, but I'm working at home. I've got Internet Access, as you can see here. Internet Explorer's up. I've got Bing open, my live desktop. My Twitter client is working, and I'm signed into Live Messenger. So it all looks fine. However, if I go into Internet Explorer, and I connect to one of our internal sites. MSW. We can see that we have a connection problem, despite the fact that my client here is configured for direct access. And the problem simply is that I haven't been fully authenticated. I've got a set of keys on my dashboard asking me for my smart card credentials. When I click on this, you won't be able to see it on my screen recording software because of the way it works. But I've, what I need to do is put my smart card credentials in and log in. And all you'll notice is that that set of keys has gone away. And all I really need to do now is to refresh the page. And you can see immediately that MSW has now come up. I can connect to all the tabs on here. For example, you can see what's happening in the news. You can kind of see when I did this, can't you? And I can also see that I'm properly logged in as me. So I can see who I am here. Close that. Go back to my site. And I've also got my personal site, should I wish to look at that as well. So direct access is really easy for the users to use, but a little harder for IT pros to set up. I just wanted to recap on what you've seen with direct access, because it is quite complicated. You remember that I had one server, which was my domain controller. It was also obviously running DNS. And that was so that we could do two things. The first of those was to support ISOTAP, the intra-site automatic tunneling address protocol which is how we get our IPv6 traffic going over an IPv4 infrastructure. We also had a certificate revocation list host to enable those lists to work properly, both inside and outside the organization. Group policy enforces those certificates, and obviously we needed certificate services as well. IIS publishes the certificate revocation lists for the clients that aren't on, on site at CorpNet. We then have a dedicated direct access server. This is running group policy and IIS. They're connected over the internal network. And then there's a separate network adapter for the direct access server to get out onto the internet where our remote client is, which we know is domain joined. Now this has to be running Windows 7 and the direct access server has to be running Windows Server 2008 R2 for this to work.